Knowing when our data was last refreshed is important. It lets us know whether everything is up to date. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the last refresh date when you use Power Query. Now this post is in response to a question that I received from Christian. And the question was this, I use a CSV file as a source and I would like to automatically display its date created each time I load a new one using transform data or data source settings. I would like to avoid having to go to the folder a second time and list the files and filter to the right one. Now Christian specifically asked about CSV files, but we also need to consider this for live data sources because the two approaches will be different. If we have a live data source to a database or a website, then we need to know the date of the last refresh. But if we're connecting to static files, such as an Excel workbook or a CSV file, then we need to get either the date modified or the date created. To have a look at the solution created in this video, then please download the example file and you'll find links in the descriptions box below. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. In the example file, I already have a CSV file loaded. So if you want to work along with this, then you will need to change the source path of that CSV file. Okay, let's start with the first example, getting the last refresh time. In Power Query, this is pretty simple. Let me open up Power Query. And then in the Queries pane on the left, I'm going to right click, go to New Query, Other Sources, and select a blank query. I'm going to rename this to Date Time Refreshed. Date Time Refreshed. In the formula bar, I'm going to type equals and then enter date, time, and select a function that's called local now. And then I'll end with an open and close bracket. I'll press return on that, and it now returns the current date and time according to my local machine. From there, I can go home, close and load, close and load two. I'll load that into a table in the existing workbook up here in cell F1, and then click OK. As you can see, it's currently the 9th of February 2022 at 1.56 in the afternoon. If we want to add seconds into this as well, we can click on it, come up to the home menu, and then create a custom number format. We already have a day, month, year, hours and minutes format selected. I'll enter another colon, type SS to add seconds, and then click OK. Now, every time I come to date and click refresh all, that refresh time will update. So keep an eye on that cell and I'll click it. There you go, the time has now updated automatically. So that's a great solution if you're working with a live source, but this approach won't work for static files. The refresh time bears no resemblance to the last time the source was created or modified. Instead, we need to capture the date modified or the date created. Now, personally, I prefer to use the date modified because if somebody changes a file manually, I want to know the date that those changes were last made. Getting back to Christian's original question, unfortunately, it's not possible to get the date modified directly from a file path. So therefore, we will need to use the folder and not just the file. We've just got to find a way to get there as efficiently as possible. Now, there are many ways that we could tackle this. So this is just one possible solution, but it should give you the general direction. So let's open up Power Query once again. And I'm going to right click, go to New Query, Other Sources, and go to a blank query. This query will be called File Path. So for my example CSV file, I can come to my source, and within that we have the file path that we are using for the CSV. And I'll just paste that 
into the file path query. Because I want my source to only exist once, I'm going to come back to my example CSV file in the file contents, I'm going to select that text string, press delete, and then use the file path query that we just created. There we go. There's no change in our example CSV file query because all we've done is repoint it to the same value. Right, now let's see if we can get the date modified from this file path. For this, I'll right click, go to new query, other sources and create another blank query. I'm going to name this date time modified and press return. Then from the view menu, I'm going to go into the advanced editor. And then we're going to use a bit more of a traditional Excel approach to this. We're going to use a lot of formulas and functions. So I'm going to start by bringing in my file path. So I'm going to get the file path. So the file path string, which is a variable that we will use, equals file path. Then I want to get the length of the file path. So I'll call that file path length, and that equals the text, text dot length. Remember that Power Query functions are case sensitive. So to get the file path length, I'll use the text.length function on the file path string. Next, I want to know the position of the last slash inside the file path. So get last slash, get last slash position. So last slash equals text dot position of open bracket and my first argument is the text string so that's the file path string I want to know where the last slash is and I want to find the last occurrence so occurrence all occurrence first occurrence last So using the elements that we've created so far, we can now extract the folder path. So the folder path equals text.start. This is based on the file path string. And I want to know where the last slash is, then plus one. And the plus one is because I also want to include the last slash. Add a comment, get the folder path. Next, we want to get the file name. So file name equals text.end. Again, this is the file path string. And this time it's the file path length. minus the position of the last slash and minus one because we don't want to include the slash itself. I'm missing a comma from the end of the previous formula and I need a comma on the end of this one. And finally, we can bring this all together to get the date modified. So date modified equals folder.contents when Power Query connects to a folder using the normal user interface method, it uses the folder.files function. This lists all the files in the folder, but also all the files in the subfolder. Instead, we can use the folder.contents function, which only includes all the files in that specific folder. I'll open a bracket. And we can see there that we need the folder path. So we've already created the folder path in a few lines above. 
And now we can add some attributes to narrow down exactly what we're looking for. So I'll enter an open curly bracket and then an open square bracket. So I want to return the name where that name equals the file name. And the file name is the variable that we created in the line above. And from there, I want to return the date modified. As I said earlier, please remember that Power Query is case sensitive. And finally, I want to return, I don't want to return source, but I want to return date modified. It says that no syntax errors have been detected. And then I'll click done. So using this, we've been able to get to the date time modified. We go to home, close and load, close and load two. Actually, I've got two queries being created here, so I only want to create a connection. I'll click OK. Then I'll right click on the date time modified, load two. I can then select a table in the existing worksheet and I'll go for cell F4 and then click OK. Let me copy the number format. And now let's test this out. I'm gonna to go to data, refresh all. So the time has changed of my data refresh, but the time has not changed on my date modified. Let me go and make a change to this file. I'll save it and then we'll test to see whether the date modified updates correctly. Okay, so I've now made the change to my CSV file. This first row should now come out at 167,000 rather than just 67,000. And also my date time modified should now change. So watch those and then I'll click refresh all. Perfect, there we go. We can see the value has updated and also the date time modified has now changed. So now heading back into Power Query. So if we wanted to change our file path at all, we could do so here in the file path query. We could also set that up as a parameter that is linked to a workbook, which might be an easier approach. So that's all for this video. Capturing the date and time to show how up to date the source is, is very important. But thankfully, whether it's a live or a static connection, we can easily do it with Power Query. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll catch you next time. <music>